humble Chinese illiterate who lived out the essence of Tao Te Ching and was worshipped by Americans. In 2007, the world-famous Columbia University in the United States launched a missing person notice looking for Chinese from more than 100 years ago. Almost overnight, the whole world began to look for this Chinese man, and CCTV also joined in. It cannot help but wonder who this Chinese man is and why he touches the heartstrings of countless people and is worth looking for around the world by taking a lot of trouble. This man is Dean Lung. He was born in Guangdong in 1857. At a time when China was in a state of internal and external strife, many Chinese were forced to flee abroad to make a living or to be trafficked into foreign labour, and he was one of the latter. When he was only 18 years old, he was trafficked into the United States as a piglet where he became the servant of a general, the famous carpenter of the United States. Carpentier graduated from the world-renowned Columbia University. He founded the Bank of California and became its president. After accumulating a lot of assets, he built a brand new city named Auckland and made himself mayor and then successively built schools, wharves, breakwaters, docks, and so on. He owned a large number of shares of the Central Pacific Railroad Company. At the same time, he was also the president of the Tele California Telegraph Company and the Overland Telegraph Company. He had also served in the California National Self-Defense Force. He was respected as general in the United States. At that time, the United States was building the main railway line in California in full swing to further develop the West. Chinese workers were the main force in the construction of the Pacific Railway. Carpentier hired a large number of Chinese workers and Ding Long was one of them. He was responsible for cooking in daily affairs for Carpentier. Although Carpentier was successful, he regarded money as his life, had a hot temper and lived alone all his life. When he was unhappy, he bit and scolded the servants. One day, Carpentier was in a bad mood, drank a lot of wine and scolded the servants and said on the spot that he would fire everyone, including Dean Long. The other servants had long been dissatisfied with Carpentier and took this advantage of opportunity to leave one after another. The next morning, after sobering up, Carpentier realised that he had lost his temper and made a mistake. He knew the trouble he would face and was ready to go hungry, but to Carpentier's surprise, Dean Lung not only didn't leave, but also served him a delicious breakfast as usual. Carpentier was surprised and asked, Why don't you leave like them? Dean Long said indifferently, Although you do have a bad temper, I think you are a good man after all. In addition, according to the teachings of Confucius, I can't leave you suddenly. Confucius in China once said, people should be loyal when entrusted by others. The general was even more surprised. He thought his servant was a cultural man and said, Confucius was a great sage in China thousands of years ago. I didn't know you could still read ancient Chinese books and understand the Tao of sages in China. Unexpectedly, Dean Long replied, I can't read. This is what my father told me. Carpentier thought his father was a cultural man and said, Although you can't read, 
Your father is a scholar. Dean Long hurriedly replied, No, my father can't read either. This is what my grandfather told him. My grandfather couldn't read either. This is what my great-grandfather told him. And I don't know the ancestors further before. In short, I come from a peasant family who had no school education. The American general was completely shocked. He had not expected that an uneducated Chinese like Dean Lung would have such a simple and honest heart, excellent character and loyal behaviour. From then on, the master and servant never abandoned each other and got along like close friends. Dean Lung was diligent and frugal, loyal to the Lord and never married. In his later years, his accumulated work income became an enviable deposit. When he was about to retire, he asked Carpentier for his resignation. Carpentier was reluctant to part with the servant who had contributed for most of his life. In order to repay and appreciate Ding Long's care for him, Carpentier said he was willing to fulfil his long-cherished wish and asked him if he needed any help before he left. But to Carpentier's surprise, Dean Lung's long-cherished wish was not to apply for a rich pension, nor to improve his life and change his status, but to ask Carpentier to donate all the hard-earned money he had saved all his life to Columbia University in the United States, and ask the university to establish a department of Sinology to study the culture of his motherland so that Americans could understand China. There was a year of suffering for China. It was just that year when the Qing government was forced to sign the Xing Chao Treaty, which promised huge compensation for one tail, 50 grams, silver, for each of the 400 million Chinese. The Chinese were looked down upon by Westerners and the wave of Chinese exclusion was higher than ever. And this humble Chinese servant became the rare glory of the Chinese people in this grey year with his extraordinary initiatives and acts. With a lofty ideal in mind, he hoped that Americans could understand the ancient culture and traditions of the Chinese nation and come to know more about Chinese people and events. Dean Long believed that the United States, which understood Chinese culture, would surely respect this great country with 5,000 years of civilization. The most direct and effective way for Americans to understand China was to set up a Chinese Sinology department in a famous American university. At that time, the $12,000 he had saved in his life was almost equivalent to $1 million now. Whether staying in the United States or returning home, he could live a rich life with this money. But he did not plan for his own future at all. His heart was only thinking about changing the fate of the Chinese in the United States and making Americans understand and respect Chinese. Carpentier didn't say anything more, but his inner feeling and moving were extraordinary. He was greatly touched again by this Chinese servant in front of him. With deep respect, he decided to help him as much as he could. However, this lovely and noble great wish was beset by a slew of practical difficulties. Dean Lung's money was to build a department of a famous university was only a drop in the bucket. Columbia University is one of the earliest and most humanistic universities in the United States. There were nearly 100 Nobel Prizes awarded for its teachers and students. With a high and unparalleled status in the world, it was by no means easy to create the first Sinology major in the school. Coupled with the prevalence of Chinese exclusion in the United States at that time, 
How could a famous American university meet the wishes of a humble Chinese worker? But Dean Lung was not discouraged. He sincerely wrote to the president of Columbia University. President, Columbia University. Sir, I send to you herewith a deposit check for $12,000 as a contribution to the fund for Chinese learning in your university. The signature was Dean Long, a Chinese person. At that time, all Americans knew this matter were very confused about what this Chinese did, and only Carpentier, who knew him best, knew what kind of person he was. In Carpentier's mind, Dean Lung was a pagan. He said, yes, he is a pagan, just as Socrates, Lucretius and Epictetus were all pagans. This is a rare man who is consistent in appearance and indeed moderate, thoughtful, brave and benevolent. In nature and acquired education, he is a disciple of Confucius. In behaviour, he is like a Puritan. In faith, he is a Buddhist, but in character, he is like a Christian. Dean Lung was almost written as a perfect person by him, and the image of a convincing Chinese leaped upon the paper. Then Carpentier wrote a letter to the president. For more than 50 years, I have saved a sum of money from my bill for drinking whiskey and smoking, and the money goes with this letter. With sincere pleasure, I will offer you to prepare for the establishment of a department of Chinese language, literature, religion and law, and wish you to name it after Professor Dean Lung's lecture on Sinology. The only condition of this donation is that my name does not have to be mentioned, but I would like to maintain the right to make additional grants in the future. But when the president of Columbia University got the donation, he was uneasy about whether he should accept it from the Chinese. The president wrote to Carpentier, asking about Dean Lung's identity. This completely aroused the righteous indignation of the upright general, and Carpentier replied excitedly, There is no problem with the Dean Lung's identity. He is not a myth but a real person, and the story is true. And I can say that among the people I was lucky to meet who were born into humble but noble natural gentlemen, if there was someone who was kind and never hurt others, he would be one of them. With the help of General Carpentier, Dean Lung's long-cherished wish succeeded. As soon as the news of setting up the Sinology Department for the Chinese in a famous American university came out, it immediately caused a sensation in the United States. When the news reached China on the other side of the ocean, Empress Daoga Chitsi was deeply moved and donated more than 5,000 precious books in person. Li Hong Zhang and Wu Ting Fang the Qing envoys to the United States also donated. Later, the president of Columbia University proposed to Carpentier that the honour of lecture professor of Sinology should be named after Carpentier or Zhang Zhuliang. After all, Dean Lung was far from them in terms of status and reputation. But Carpentier insisted on using Dean Lung's name or he would withdraw his capital. With a lot of hard work, the Department of Sinology at Columbia University was finally completed, and this Department of Sinology is today the world-famous Department of East Asia at Columbia University. After that, these famous figures in China came out from here. Hu Xi, Fang Yulang, Su Jimong, Shang Ziwen, Ma Yingchu, Chao Xingji, Jing Hengzhi, Pang Guangdan, Wen Yi Yudo, and so on. Here, someone translated the English version of A Dream of Red Mansions. Here, Zhang Zhe Liang's log is kept. Here, Li Zhongring 
in Zhang Guo Tao left precious first hand oral records. It can be said that the brilliance of the literary history of the Republic of China comes from the Department of East Asia. Without the Department of East Asia, the brilliance of the literature of the Republic of China will be half dimmed. Today, the Sinology Lecture, named after Dean Long, is still the top academic palace in the world for studying Chinese culture. During the preparation for the establishment of the Sinology Department at that time, Columbia University reached out to Carpentia in every detail. Carpentier's donation to the Department of Sinology was later increased to US dollars 500,000, equivalent to 830 million yuan today. In 1903, the president of Columbia University asked him to donate 400,000 US dollars to build the law school building, but he refused because only the Department of Sinology could touch his heart. Moved by Dean Lu, Carpentier later donated a lot of money to other universities to popularise Chinese culture and education, such as the University of California, where Chinese live. From then on, this powerful general transformed into a philanthropist and a sponsor of education. For the rest of his life, he continued to give additional funds to the Sinology Department of Columbia University, donated scholarships of various names, and even donated his own house in New York. Because of Dean Long, he has a very special feelings for China. At that time, he angrily attacked the atrocities of the United States in ravaging Chinese and the injustice of persecuting Chinese of the past act of Congress. He also came to Guangdong, China, many times during his lifetime and donated 25,000 US dollars to Boji Medical School in Guangzhou. Boji Medical College, founded in 1866, is the earliest Western medical school in China where Sun Yat-sen once studied medicine and engaged in revolutionary activities. Because of Dean Long, Carpentia, who once regarded wealth as his life, donated countless sums of money all his life, even put himself on the verge of bankruptcy and had to return to a small town to live. However, he still endured the hardships of travel to call for only to meet the precious wish of this Chinese servant. This was a tragic donation. However, Dean Long, who achieved such great success, then lived in seclusion. People can no longer know anything about him. Although this ordinary person has disappeared, his brilliant light is still shining on the world. After that, Countless people followed his example and contributed to the great cause of promoting Chinese culture in the exchange of Chinese and Western civilizations. There was once a mainland entrepreneur who was impressed by Dean Long's deeds, donated to the East Asia Library at Columbia University and established relevant funds. A well-known religious charity in Hong Kong, thousands of miles away, also donated Siku Kwan Shu Hui Yao, the complete library in four divisions. Hundreds of volumes of precious Chinese cultural treasures with the wisdom and philosophies of the ancient sages are used to enlighten today's students at Columbia University to bring peace to the world. The seeds planted by Dean Long, a small fry a hundred years ago, have grown into towering trees in the long river of history. A servant in a humble position could have made a name for himself and his ancestors, but he chose to remain anonymous and indifferent to fame and wealth. Such a soul, such a vision, such a spirit. 
looking at the whole of Chinese history, how many people can compete with it? As commented in the missing person notice, Dean Long donated money, but more importantly, he contributed his vision and ideals.